Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on, and today we're going to be taking a look at Ghoul Boy for the Nintendo Switch. And while this one did actually come out a minute ago, it did recently go on sale, so it was actually my first time playing it. The story starts off with an epic scenario with, of course, an even more epic legend that in a world run by ghouls, the ghoul king will eventually be dethroned by a ghoul hunter. So in order to stave off this prophecy, the ghoul king puts in works a plan to capture the ghoul hunter, but doesn't really consider that maybe it's actually Ghoul Boy, the ghoul hunter's son, that was prophesied to take him out of power. And unfortunately, while we have multiple characters working through this eons old prophecy, that's about as much of any story as we're ever going to get until we make our way to that final scene. But if you're the type of gamer who can forgive a lack of a story as long as the gameplay mechanics are solid, then you'll probably still have a pretty decent experience with Ghoul Boy. If you were a fan of those older platformers such as Castlevania or Ghosts and Goblins, definitely Ghosts and Goblins, then you probably already know a little bit of what to expect for how the game plays. You'll start the game off with your main weapon and even gain certain consumable weapons as you play through, confronting ghouls and goblins and ghosts as you platform your way to the end of each level. And thankfully, true to the era, the platforming, jumping, and the weapon's hitboxes are really, really tight and very predictable, making it a really enjoyable experience as far as platforming is concerned. Each random mob in the game is going to take between one and two hits with your main weapon, and thankfully our character is a little less fragile than that, having an HP bar that can allow him to take three or four hits before eventually losing his life. But if you do make it far enough in the game, you will find a shop within each level that allows you to buy more hearts for your health bar, or more of those consumable weapons such as daggers, pairs of daggers, or spears. Daggers and dagger pairs act kind of like boomerangs, throwing past the enemy and returning doing double damage, and disappearing right before they would expectedly go back into your inventory. The spears, on the other hand, are actually one of the game's more unique mechanics. You'll start off the game with a double jump right from the get-go, which is incredibly helpful, but even with this double jump mechanic, there's going to be a lot of platforms that you really can't reach. So the game relies on Ghoul Boy's spear-throwing ability to lodge a spear in the wall, creating his own superficial platform to be able to get to new heights. Additionally, there might be a lot of places where enemy placement just seems really non-intuitive and locks you into a certain spot, that using a spear to create your own unique platform is probably going to be the only way to get past the enemy, making it unscathed. And in this sense, the spear-throwing dynamic in Ghoul Boy and creating new platforms is going to be something you'll rely on hugely even from that very first level. Levels in the game are divided into several chapters, each chapter having about nine levels with the same theme, and of course every single chapter is going to have its own set of bosses. These bosses, though, unlike the Zelda boss or like the regular mobs, take much more than two or three hits to take down, and while having to hit them 15 or 20 times may initially seem daunting, their attack patterns, though they are fairly intricate, do repeat, and so it doesn't really take much effort more than trial and error to memorize the attack patterns and eventually make it past that boss. Thankfully, though, the game does give us one checkpoint in each level, and the checkpoint at the boss room is the boss room. So if you do get killed trying to vanquish that boss, you'll start out right inside the boss's room to give you as many tries as you need to memorize the patterns to eventually beat him and move on. But aside from checkpoints, boss rooms, and shops within every single level, Ghoul Boy also offers a shop at the start screen. And while the shops in each level are for consumable goods, such as health or throwable daggers and spears, the one at the start screen is for permanent upgrades. But whether you're trying to upgrade your main attack weapon, your inventory for your consumable goods, or your health bar, it's going to take upwards of a thousand gold for each, so you might have to be playing the game a little while before you can purchase your first permanent upgrade. But moving on from the game's shops and its mechanics, its visuals are a pretty solid draw. They are truly reminiscent of those classic eras of platforming gaming, and whether it's in the pixel sprite quality or even the animations and movements of enemies, everything is really, really on point. Unfortunately, though, the chiptune music is also era-appropriate, and if you actually do remember through the lens of fondness that we have for those classic games, those MIDI files were really short and repeated really often. And while the music in Ghoul Boy is actually pretty good, its repetition is something you're going to notice because some of the levels can take you quite a while to master. And as we've talked about just about everything else, this is probably a pretty good time to start addressing some of the game's critiques. Ghoul Boy is a solidly reminiscent platformer that draws heavily on inspirations from those great classics such as Castlevania and <clears throat> Ghosts and Goblins. But its one main, if only its only critique, is the fact that it does seem to just be a clone and doesn't really offer anything new. 
There are certain quality of life issues like not knowing which of the nine levels in a chapter you're playing on unless you go back to the start screen, but these don't really affect the quality of the gameplay or the experience or the enjoyment for the player, so I don't really count them as flaws against the game. But as you make your way out of the first chapter and into the second, you'll start to realize just how punishing some of these levels are, and depending on your ability to handle a steep learning curve, might feel that certain enemy placement or enemy AI is purposefully poised in order to artificially increase the game's difficulty. But that being said, I personally never felt that the game was cheap or tried to cheat you out of anything, and after playing through a certain scenario several times, I did generally find a really intuitive way to make it past. But even then, as satisfying and reminiscent as the game is, and as solid as the mechanics are, it did feel like kind of a lather, rinse, repeat. And about halfway through the game, I started really wanting to just take a break. But long story short, if you're not trying to marathon the game, and you are the type of gamer that sits down, plays a few levels, walks away, comes back the next day and plays a few more, this is actually something that probably will be a really enjoyable experience. I really can't over-exaggerate how solid the mechanics are, but again, if you're a marathon gamer who wants to play this from beginning to end in one go, you might start to feel like it's losing its shine about halfway through. But anyway, that does about wrap up the review of Ghoul Boy Now on the Nintendo Switch, so if you enjoyed the review, or especially if you found it helpful, feel free to throw me a like or a comment to show your support. And don't forget to click that little bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. New and unique indie games are coming out literally every single day, so there's always going to be something new to find right here. But anyway, this has been Budget Gamers. As always, thanks for watching.